Hi there, normally on this YouTube channel we talk about Kindles and reading books, but once a month what I like to do sometimes is post an update video on my YouTube journey. I am on this mission to become a full-time YouTuber one day, and on the way of doing that I want to share transparently all my metrics, accomplishments, and struggles along the way so I can help other people who are also trying to do this. I really wish when I was starting out there were other small YouTubers out there sharing their metrics, and that's exactly what I want to do today. I break these monthly update videos into three different parts. First, we talk about the income and expenses for the previous month, which is obviously very interesting to a lot of people. Secondly, we talk about the other metrics and analytics from my YouTube channel and other major platforms. And then lastly, I share any major struggles or accomplishments from the previous month. Now, because this is January, I will be posting this update dedicated to the entire year of 2021. And then next month in February, I'll start posting for January numbers and then in March I will do the same thing for February and so on. All right with all that out of the way let me actually jump into this. The first thing I want to talk about is income and expenses. I'll start with income. As a YouTuber last year in 2021 I made $10,400. Now let me actually break down where that money came from. 5.2k came from YouTube AdSense, 4.9k came from affiliate income, $150 came from product sales and $85 came from direct support from a service called Buy Me A Coffee. Let me actually explain what all this means. Firstly, YouTube AdSense was obviously the biggest contributor to my income last year. I made the vast majority, more than half of my income through YouTube AdSense. Now let me explain why this is actually not a good thing. I don't wanna be relying on YouTube AdSense for my income as I grow into a larger YouTube channel. This is because if YouTube makes one change in their algorithm, my whole channel can basically tank and all my income is gone. This is very unlikely to happen, but you'll see a lot of YouTubers are diversifying where their income comes from for this purpose. You don't want to have one platform being your sole source of income that is very unsafe if you want to make a living off the internet. Secondly, I also want to mention the product sales that I talked about. I made $150 in product sales last year. That was all actually within the last few weeks of the year in December. I just launched my book club at the end of the year. We started reading Atomic Habits this month in January, and that has been a crazy success. I wasn't planning on launching a giant book club community of over 100 people, but it's turned out to be that way, and I'm really loving it. And it turned out to be a way for me to make some sales for that product. I didn't really charge a set price for it. It was supposed to be a free product, but because I turned it into a proper book club discussion board, there were some costs associated with that, and I asked people to contribute money if they could, and several people did and we raised $150. Moving forward, I'm treating this like an actual product. There is a cost now to join because it's actually a proper community and I do think there's so much value happening in that community. So moving forward, I'm treating this like a product and I do see this as well as other products I want to make to, to increase in terms of the source of income and the breakdown. I want the product sales to be the biggest contributor, not lower on the list. It's going to work its way up as I grow and as I make more products. One other note I want to mention is the buy me a coffee. I made $85 last year through that buy me a coffee link, simply having at the bottom of my video, some of my email newsletters. That was really cool having random people buy me a coffee, tipping me money through that website. I've stopped doing that since because I don't want to accept tips through that now, I have a YouTube tip button on all my videos, and that button is a simple and easier way to get that tip to me. But instead of relying on that, I'm not really advertising it, it's simply there for people who wanna show their appreciation. Next, let me talk about expenses. And this is where it gets a little more interesting in my opinion. In total for last year, I spent $13,500 in expenses. Now the top three expenses I had for last year was 4.7K in YouTube editing costs, 3.7K in gear upgrades, and 3.4K on various purchases, like all the Kindles and Kobos I bought throughout the year. Now, obviously I did not make money last year. I lost about $3,000 in terms of income versus expenses. But for me, in my particular situation, this is okay. Mainly because in the prior year in 2020, I made a ton of money through this ergo chair video I made. I don't even talk about chairs anymore, but that one YouTube review video I made generated so many referrals. I had enough money left over to to reinvest it into this past year and it really paid off. I didn't actually lose money because I had money left over from 2020. There have only been a few situations now where I've actually invested my personal money into YouTube. Right when I was starting, I bought all the initial gear, then also throughout
throughout the year last year, I had to upgrade my computer and my desk setup. That was also a personal expense. But putting all of that aside, all the expenses I had are being paid for through the income I'm making on YouTube. I am not taking the money out and paying myself. All the money I make on YouTube goes right back into the channel, into products or gear or editing, mostly editing costs as you can see. That is really where I put all the money right now. Now in 2022, I intend to stay profitable. I do not want to continue making a net loss year after year. This year, my goal is to make a net profit, a net income, and I don't expect my expenses especially to increase by much. I'm actually trying to consolidate how much I spend on a yearly and monthly basis. So hopefully this year, we'll see a nice larger profit margin compared to last year. Okay, next up, I wanna talk about my analytics and metrics for the YouTube channel and other major platforms that I'm on. Let's start off with YouTube. On YouTube last year, I had just over 1 million total views, which blows my mind. I know I'm still a small YouTuber, so having even 1 million come up in any metric is just really amazing to see. I'm very grateful for that. Next up, we also gained just over 9,000 new subscribers last year. And right now, as of making this video, we're hovering right in the middle of 12K, between 12 and 13K, which is really, really awesome. Most of my subscribers just came in the past year. And keep in mind, my YouTube channel has been online and active for several years now, but I only started posting videos regularly in 2020. So majority of my growth has happened in the last year, which is very humbling to see. Last year as well, we ended the year with 12,000 subscribers and we also gained 5.2K in AdSense revenue, as I mentioned earlier. So a great year on YouTube for 2021. After YouTube, I also want to talk about Twitter and my email and newsletter, both of which I'm focusing on heavily for this year. Starting with Twitter, I ended the year with 524 total followers. And I also have a total lifetime tweet count of 1,611. Now, the reason why I mentioned that is because I really want to focus on that tweet count. The more I tweet, the more followers and views and things like that I'll get. The number of followers I have is really just a result of how much I tweet. This year, I have a goal of tweeting something every single day. So we'll see where these numbers go at the end of the year. With the email newsletter, we ended the year with 416 email subscribers with an open rate of 67% and the total email sent for the entire account was 4,055. These numbers I really do anticipate to skyrocket this year simply because of the book club and my really strong emphasis on the newsletter. If you haven't already subscribed to that, link for that as well as my Twitter profile down below. There is one more platform I wanna talk about and that is Instagram. This year, I do not plan to take Instagram seriously anymore. I've tried so hard to make this platform work for me, coming up with weekly content strategies and making daily videos sometimes and it just hasn't stuck and I just decided you know what this platform isn't worth it for me right now I would rather invest all my time and energy on other platforms like my email newsletter Twitter and YouTube and just cut Instagram out I do like Instagram it's a really cool platform but for me personally I get distracted so much on it it's mostly friends and family on there it's not really related to my YouTube life at all I don't really have that same type of audience and following on there and I've just tried really hard to make it work and it just hasn't been worth it. So this year, I'm just telling myself, forget about Instagram, focus on other platforms instead. For this last section of the video, I wanna talk about three major accomplishments from 2021. And I gotta say, these are very big accomplishments for me. And looking back, I can't believe they happened in just the past year, time really flies. Let me talk about the first one first. The first accomplishment I have from last year is I found my niche of being a Kindle YouTuber. Believe it or not, one year ago from right now, I was not making Kindle videos. I was making tech and productivity videos. I think in January of last year, I was super hype about making these Notion videos. But looking back, I'm really kind of cringing at them a little bit. They are very useful videos, but they're nothing the way I would make them as of today. And I don't even think about Notion anymore. I don't use it that much compared to Evernote. Whole, that's a whole different conversation though. Point being, it wasn't until the spring of last year where I really started making Kindle videos. And that was a big turning point for my YouTube channel. That's the entire reason why this channel has really blown up in the past six to 12 months. And that is something I'm really grateful for, finding my direction as a Kindle YouTuber. I'm really doubling down on that this year, especially. The second major accomplishment I wanna talk about is ending the year with 100 new uploads on YouTube. That's actually really cool because ending in 2020, I had a total of 100 videos on my YouTube channel. And in 2021, in the whole year, I made 100 new videos. So I ended the year with over 200 total videos on my YouTube channel. That in 
himself is a major accomplishment and averages out to be about two videos every single week. And the reason why this is a major accomplishment for me is last year I had a lot of life changes like getting married, moving out, it was a whole crazy summer and I had to pre-schedule over a month's worth of content in advance. So that goal was not easily achieved and it's something really happy that I was able to do. Moving into the new year, I do intend to stick with this twice a week video upload goal that I have for myself, though I will not be holding myself to it as strictly as I was last year simply because there's so many other other projects I'm working on right now, I want to give that time and attention as well. The last major accomplishment I have from last year is simply clarity. Last year, I learned a ton about entrepreneurship and how to become a full-time YouTuber. I've had this goal for over two years now, but it wasn't until last year where I really figured out the plan behind how to do that. And I remember distinctly when I first began making weekly YouTube videos, I was so really frustrated about not knowing the direction of where I wanted to go. I didn't know about Kindles at the time. I just knew I really wanted to make YouTube videos, but I had no idea how to make it my full-time job. Last year was the year where I figured it out and I'm so happy that happened. It took so long to really learn about it, read a bunch of books, follow other YouTubers, follow creators on Twitter. All of that combined has really given me so much clarity. I no longer have those really frustrated moments of not knowing what to do. I actually have the exact opposite. There's too much to do and not enough time to do it, but I'm really happy and grateful for that clarity I gained last year. I'm sure I'll be talking more about the specifics of my plan to make this actually happen over the coming months. If you're interested in following along in this journey, be sure to subscribe to my email newsletter where I post more behind the scenes as well as this playlist, a link on the screen right now for that as well. New video coming out every month this year. I tried this last year, but I didn't really stick with it. But this year, I do intend to make a video every month updating everyone on my YouTube journey. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. I will see you next time.